Okay, today we're going to begin with one of the more exciting features of Northcraft, kind of on the cutting edge a little bit, uh, in terms of the functionalities that people are using. So for existing customers who would like to take their Northcraft BI applications and their ITSM program to the next level, we're going to show you today a little bit more about the data mining features of analysis services which are enabled by default for all the Northcraft BI applications at no additional cost. For prospects that are looking at Northcraft, we'd like to show you some of the features that we have that differentiate us from other BI solutions available on the market. So we're going to look at the clustering algorithm in particular with the Northcraft Incident Management BI application, which is available for ServiceNow, BMC Remedy, HP Service Manager. We have uh, these applications on the operations side as well for SolarWinds, BPPM, and other event management platforms. So let's begin with kind of the prerequisites for data mining. We need a connection to Northcraft BI the Northcraft BI application sitting on analysis services. This is kind of a point and click exercise, not particularly difficult. Um, we need our cube connection here so we can get our data. Okay, so we are now connecting to incident management and there now we have our metrics and attributes from Remedy which we'll be showing today. Then next we'll create our mining structure which is kind of a mini database that's specific to data mining that will reside in the analysis uh, services server. And then we will add our model to the structure, which would be either our um, one of these various algorithms. And again, we're looking at clustering in particular, uh, which is one of, one of the more basic algorithms that uh, people start with. They typically start with decision trees or clustering. The reason we're going to choose clustering is because it is better at showing you things that you didn't already know about the data, finding relationships um, that you may have been unaware of before. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get our data and we're going to start simple as we always do with total incidents. Now, uh, since we have 55,000 of them and we're working with data mining and we want to have a quicker demo, we're going to filter this down to let's just look at uh, high priority and critical incidents okay so let's take out those lows and mediums okay now it gets us a smaller data set that we can work with and now we want to drag in our key okay that's incident number it's referred to as the grain many times and so it doesn't need to be just incident number it could be change request could be um, CI ID problem uh, ID etc something that's unique okay so that what that also does is it unlocks the property fields which are part of analysis services here so we're gonna bring in those property fields and these are just essentially the fields from remedy that are on the uh, uh, the incident or the HPD help desk form for those of you who are familiar um, in service now we, we kind of bring together task and incident task into one view so we're gonna bring in information from let's bring in uh, our closure product category tier 1 tier 2 um, let's bring in um, things like let's see product name we could bring in reported source possibly the region service type you know we're just we're just choosing fields where we want to see if any relationships exist um, in the data submit time okay we've got enough fields for our analysis to do kind of a basic and simple analysis again here the the key is not to pick relationships that you know that exist but to just look in the data and and uh, have the clustering algorithm kind of do our work for us so uh, we have our data sheet and now what we can do is begin our our uh, mining structure creation which again is point, point and click and, and really all of this is as long as you're using kind of the basic features okay so we're gonna point at our spreadsheet once we have 
determined the direction that our analysis is going to go in permanently, we would connect to it an external data source like the Northcraft data warehouse or cubes and make these data mining uh, structures permanent. For now we're going to use a, a spreadsheet. So let's select our, our data range and uh, we're going to hit control A that selects the whole sheet. Click OK and move on to the next step. Okay, we're going to include all of this data. The key here um, that row labels is actually the incident number. I meant to uh, relabel that, but I didn't. Make sure you do that. Uh, we're going to sample 99% of the data. The more data you sample, the higher the accuracy. Also takes up additional server resources. So uh, we're going to do 15,000 rows max. It's actually less than that, but it'll autocorrect. And we're going to give it a generic name at this point. Okay, so now we're loading our mining structure. Again, that was created on the analysis services server, which you do need to have administrator permissions for that in order for this to work. Um, does does require additional resources on the server. So, um, you know, analysis is fair, services is fairly low overhead, so I wouldn't worry too much about the crunching. But um, if you start to put in hundreds of thousands of records or you know millions of records, um, you know it, it definitely is going to have an impact. Um, okay, next we're going to add the model, and this is the algorithm that we would like to use to an analyze the data. And again, we mentioned that we're going to use the uh, the clustering algorithm, so we'll we'll do that. Um, decision trees and clustering are a good place to start. And um, what we're going to do now is um, use all of these fields for both input and prediction. And the prediction that occurs is essentially a probability rating. And so we're going to use, um, there we go, all of those fields, mainly because we're looking for a place to go in the data as we use clustering for the first time. Our key remains uh, that incident number. Click Finish. And now we've got our first model to operate with, and we can see that there are, in fact, relationships between these attributes. So let's dig into them a little bit at a, at a basic level first with this cluster characteristics. Then we can move into uh, cluster profiles. So the first thing we see here is that it looks like in all of the data that was sampled, uh, the SLM status was not specified. Uh, total incidents equaling one is, is good to know that that's a hundred percent probability. That means all of these are in fact an incident. Um, now this is our first thing that's kind of interesting about the data. So there's a 79 percent probability of a critical or high incident having the value user service restoration. That is actually unexpected um, in a remedy data set. It really should be, if it's a critical or high incident, it really should be an infrastructure event, infrastructure restoration, uh, not user service restoration or user service request for the most part. That's what we would expect to see in the data. So this is something you can go back to your remedy administrator uh, and, and have them take a look at it. And maybe it's time for a new default menu value for uh, critical or high incidents. Maybe that should be infrastructure event by default. Uh, just something to take a look at and analyze further, but it could impact data quality. Another data, potential data quality issue is this uh, re reported source field. 70% of the time it's not specified. That really needs to default to phone. So, um, you know, for, for most companies, um, it depends if, if an incident was reported basically via, via self-service. Um, via email, via the phone, via an event. Those are some of the different ways that incidents get reported. Um, so, you know, that's another area for exploration to improve data quality and, re and your reports. Uh, may not be surprising to you that uh, the region that requested the support in you know 54 percent of the time here is corporate and not the field so you know these are some of the the initial things that we find out um, from the cluster characteristics it kind of stack ranks the priority top to bottom and at the top things you need to take a look at 
the top 20, let's say, and the, at the bottom, probably you know very low probability of occurrence. Next, you look at these cluster profiles, which tell you what happens most of the time. Okay, so here you can see, well, a lot of times with these critical and highs, it looks like they're hardware, technical support. Um, you know, this is kind of giving the the top five in terms of a profile of what we see from critical and high incidents. So definitely things to look at uh, that could be of interest for exploration to help you. Um, improve your data quality and therefore improve your reporting and therefore help you with continual improvement of your incident management process. So that's a basic look at clustering. We do have product offerings as well for uh, these data mining models. We have service offerings through ourselves and our partners. We encourage you to think about it and let us know about your data mining needs so that um,